Hey guys, hope you're well. So this lesson is gonna be all about ratios, okay? And we're specifically gonna look at two things. We're gonna look at simplifying ratios, and then we're gonna look at something called ratios in unit form. So let's get started. Let's talk about what a ratio is. Let's say, for example, in your class at school, there are um, 10 boys, okay, and 20 girls. 10 boys and 20 girls. So if we wanted to simplify that, well, what you could do is the following. You need to try and make these two numbers as small as possible. Now, the way that you do that is you divide. So you've got to think of what number could go into both of these. Now, if, you, if you're not that good with thinking about what number it could be, then just start with small numbers. So let's divide both by two. So we're going to divide both by two. Okay, so that would be five boys and 10 girls. Now, could you divide that any smaller? What number could you divide both of these with? Well, we could divide both of these um, by the number five. If you divide both of them by five, then this gives you one boy and two girls. And then you cannot go any simpler. That is the simplest that you could have gone. Of course, you could have gone straight from here to here if you knew that the number 10 could go into both, but it doesn't matter if you wanna go in small little steps as you go along. So what it means is that in your school, there, or in your class, there's 10 boys and 20 girls, so the ratio is one boy for every two girls. That's what a ratio means, okay? It's the simplified version. So that is um, what we're gonna be looking at in this lesson. So let's go to the next one. So you need to simplify the numbers three to six. Okay, so you need to be able to divide both of these numbers by the same uh, number. So we know that both of these can be divided by three. So that'll give you a one over here and then a two over here. And then that cannot be any further simplified and so that would be the answer. So here we have nine and 12. So you're not gonna use the number two because the number two cannot go into nine, okay? But the, what about the number three? So the number three can go into both. So then that'll become a three and that'll become a four. Now, what number can go into both of these? Well, there's no number that can go into both of those unless you use the number one, but that's not gonna change anything. So this would be the most simplified answer. Here's another one. So here we have seven and 21. So the number two wouldn't work because two cannot go into this number and it cannot go into this number. The number three won't work because three cannot go into seven. Three can go into 21, but it has to be able to go into both. The number four won't work, five won't work, six won't work. The number seven will actually work because seven can go into both. And so this would become a one and then this would become a three. Okay, I'm gonna show you three more examples of these ones, and one of, some of the examples are gonna include decimals, so I'm gonna show you what to do there. And then we're gonna be moving on to unit form, okay? And then we'll be done with this lesson. So when you have the number four and 22, the number two can go into both of them. I always like to start at the very small numbers. So the number two can go into both. So we divide by two, divide by two, and so that's gonna give you a two, and 11, and you cannot go any smaller smaller than that. I know I said we're gonna go to the one with decimals next, but I just decided to throw in this example um, because a lot of learners, they think that they have to find the biggest number first, but you don't. You see, these numbers are quite big. So you don't have to try to think about what is the biggest number that can go into both. You can just start with the number two. Check this out, and then you're just gonna keep going. So you divide both by two, and that's gonna give you 44 and 50. But then don't stop there because now we can use the number two again. So we just divide by two, divide by two, and that'll give you 22 and 25. Now, there is no number that can now go into both of those. You could try the number three doesn't work, four doesn't work, um, five doesn't go into both of them, six, seven, eight. Nope, that would be your final answer. Now, when you have decimals, you don't want to be able to, you, you want to be able to change that. So in one of our chapters, we learned how to how to do calculations um, without a calculator. And I showed you when you multiply by 10, or when you multiply something with 100, or when you multiply something with 1,000, and then we also looked at divide, okay? And we just said that 
when you divide, move the decimal to the left. And when you multiply, move the decimal to the right. Okay, and the number of places that you move the decimal is given by the number of zeros in the number. So if you just want to move these decimals to the back so that we can get rid of them, you just need to multiply both of these by 10. What you do to the one, you must do to the other. Because that's going to then take this decimal to the back, and so you're going to have 15 with a decimal at the back. But remember, when the decimal's at the back, you just ignore it. And then here, you're just going to get, you're just going to multiply that by 10, and so you just end up with 65, okay? So now we can just restart the question using these two. So what number can go into both? Well, the number 5 can go into both, so you divide both sides by 5. And so 15 divided by 5 is 3, and then 65 divided by 5 is 13. And then those numbers cannot be simplified any further, and so that would be your final answer. So here's another one with decimals. So what we'll do is we'll just multiply by 10, and we what you do to the one, you do to the other, because then that will just become 12 and 52. Okay, now we can just start breaking these numbers down little bits at a time. So I like to just always start with dividing by two. You can use a bigger number if you know what they are, but if you don't, then you just start with two. And so that's gonna take us to six, and if you divide this by two, you end up with 26. Now these two numbers can go even smaller. So you just divide these by two. And so that's gonna give you three and 13. I think that was the same answer as the previous one. Ah, interesting. Okay, so three and 13. Now we're gonna look at ratios in unit form. Don't worry, it's not that technical. All that it means is that one of the numbers must be a the number one, okay? Um, once the ratio is simplified. So one of the numbers must be a one. So what I mean by that is, can you see here we didn't have a one? So that is not called unit form. So this is not unit form. Uh, this one, not unit form, not unit form, not unit form. This one is unit form because it has a one over there. So it is, it is unit form. And then this one is not unit form. This one is unit form. So we, if we can get one of them to become a one, then it's called unit form. So it's a very easy way to do it. All you do is the following. You take the smallest number out of these two, which is this one, and you just divide both of them by that. Oh, something very, very important. When we were doing these simplifying ones, these simplifying the ratios, um, I forgot to mention, answer must never have a decimal. The answer must never have a decimal. You see how the answer has no decimals in it? It's only got whole numbers, okay? Only whole numbers, okay? But when we are doing unit form, answer may have decimals. Then it's okay. All right, so um, 14 divided by 14 is one. And then 22 divided by 14, you can just chuck that onto the calculator because it's gonna give you some ugly decimals. And just round to like two decimals or whatever your teacher asks for. So that'll be 1.57. So you see it's got a decimal, but that's okay when we're using unit form. Okay, so here's the next one, divide by the smallest. You don't have to simplify this first, just divide by the smallest, both sides. And so you end up with a one over there. And then this one would be one point three three okay this one you always divide by the smallest one when going for unit form and so you just divide by 11 so that we can end up with a one because remember we said with unit form the one of them must always have a one and the only way that you do that is by doing something like that okay and then 32 over 11 is if you round this to two decimals this would be 2.91 